Hello, welcome to the Real Estate Regroup Show. I am your host, LJ Walker, a real estate investor helping you realize your dream of owning a home or investing in one. Today's show is aimed at military and nomadic, those who live a nomadic lifestyle. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to address the landlords. Those of you who are landlords, if you're interested in renting to someone who's in the military, you may want to advertise your site on your apartment, excuse me, on http colon backslash backslash www.military.com. What's great about renting to somebody in the military is that the military, they get a living stipend. Now, that stipend does not go directly to you. The stipend goes directly to the military personnel. And then from that stipend, they are supposed to pay you with it. Now, if they don't pay you with it, you can report that actually. You don't necessarily, I mean, it's still good to go through the eviction, but you actually can report that to their superior Yes, it would get them in trouble, but at least you would get your money back and it's probably best. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, many people who are in the military, sometimes they get deployed and they have they don't always have control as far as when they get deployed and where they get deployed to. So it's best really to give them a month to month lease as opposed to giving them a yearly lease. I know that many people in the Virginia Beach area, they have special leases all together when it comes to dealing with uh, people who are in the military. They don't normally give them a regular lease like they give everybody else. Please also note, you don't necessarily have to be in the same town or in our instance borough in order to attract military personnel military personnel don't necessarily not all of them want to live close to the base for example we have a base out in brooklyn but many times there uh you'll find that there are people in the military who live queens they're not living in Brooklyn. So don't think that, oh, well, I don't live next to it. They won't want to rent from me. Uh, yes, they will if the price is right. And if the accommodations that you provide, if, if the apartment is good, they will definitely do so. Okay, let's move on to those who are in the military and or who live a nomadic lifestyle and what I recommend or what I think as far as uh, your living conditions should be or your investing options should be. First off, I think it's best that you rent an apartment while you are act active within the military. Again, because you don't know when you're going to be deployed, you don't know how long you're going to be deployed for, uh, you, you don't know when it's going to happen. So that's one of the reasons why I think renting is better for you as opposed to owning property. But if you insist and you want to own property, then I think you should think about maybe applying for a government co-op or condo. The reason why is number one, they're less expensive. And number two, there's less restrictions. See, when you have a house, you are going to have to be responsible for maintenance. There are certain places where if the grass is too high, you will be issued a code violation. 
And you don't want that. You don't want to have to pay for that. Now, that's why I think that when you retire from the military, that's when you think about owning a home and or possibly becoming a landlord. Because when you're a landlord, that's more hands-on. Okay? Now, the best way to invest is to definitely go to this website, http colon backslash backslash usa.gov backslash veteran dash housing, the number sign item dash 36637. And there you will find all types of information on the different grants and loan programs that are out there for veterans to buy a home and to repair a home. Now, while you're in the military, there are other ways to get into real estate that can be quite profitable. You can buy a REIT, either a mutual fund or an ETF, or you can find a private REIT where you are partnering up with someone else or with a group of people to buy a to buy a property. And I wouldn't do the, I wouldn't uh, join a group of people to buy a one family. By the way, I've seen that and I don't agree with that. If you're going to join a group of people, make sure it's at least a multifamily, but better yet, make it an apartment building and make sure you are not the one that's responsible for any type of maintenance, that they hire a residential manager, a property manager, or um, some, uh, some, they have a team of plumbers, electricians, etc., to take care of any incidentals or a superintendent that will take care of anything if the if anything goes wrong with the property as far as or maintain the property itself. You can do that. You can go into a crowd fund or a note fund. You can do turnkey properties. Again, you have to do your research to make sure that they're reputable. The other thing you can do is if you know you're going to be in a place for a while, uh, you can buy the property and then you can do owner financing where you become the bank and you're not responsible for any maintenance at all. The people who you let live in the house will eventually become homeowners and they will be paying you monthly a mortgage payment and not a rent payment. When it comes to places that, places, locations where you want to buy property, I say stick to cities or towns very close to cities. Tourist areas and college towns are pretty good investments and easier for you because being that you you don't know where you're going to go and you could be far away for a while, it's just difficult for you. Um, the reason why I'm thinking about that because I've had to deal with that with my ex-boyfriend. I also met someone who was actually stationed in Italy and she was there about five years while well, she had this property in Florida and she was really suffering because she didn't get the help and the support that she needed in order to maintain that particular property. And the people living there, unfortunately, weren't paying her anything. So that's one of the reasons why I'm saying this. And then the other thing is, when it comes to, let's say, flipping and rehabbing, I really don't think that that is the best because 
when it comes to flipping and rehabbing, even if you have a good team, sometimes surprises happen. Sometimes there's something behind the wall that you can't see. And it's not until you tear it down that you see, okay, this is a problem. Then you also have to deal with certain government officials, city inspectors, some of them power trip, some of them may be really hard on you when it comes to finishing the property the way, you know, either you wanted to or they, or, or what have you. So that's why I would rule that out. That's my opinion, of course. And this is even if you do have, like like I said, a boots on the ground person. Because the truth is you can have a boots on the ground person, a general contractor, but and a project manager. But you pretty much have to supervise them. And it really is not easy doing so remotely. It, it, it really isn't. It can be done. A lot of times it takes a long time, you know, I know many people watch the shows and they're like, oh, it's only going to take two months. But see, those are people who have been working with one another for a long time. They probably know one another. They probably also are buddies with the city inspector, with the tax assessor's office, with the city registrar. There are some people who have built uh, that type of network. They have that type of connection with those people. So things go by. But if you're brand new to the game, it may not run as smoothly. It can take, it may take you a year. It may take you two years to finish flipping that property. That's what they don't tell you on TV. Because that can happen. And the other thing is, lastly, unfortunately, the pictures that you can say, okay, send me pictures, which is definitely good to do to see the progress of the work. But sometimes pictures can be deceiving and sometimes they'll they'll show you, they'll take a picture of one area and not the other area and give you a hard time when you want to see the other area. So when you're far away, there's but much, but so much that you can do. And you can say, well, I'm going to curse them out. That doesn't always make people do their the job the way they're supposed to do the job unfortunately. So that's my two cents and a quarter on the best ways that somebody in the military and or who lives a nomadic lifestyle can invest. Hopefully the information that I've shared will help you make smart financial moves. Remember, feel free to pass this along because each one, reach one, teach one. Bye for now. Until next time, have a good night.